Hi, everybody. My name is Sharice Michelle Davis, and welcome to Pineapple Talks. Pineapple Talks is all about conversations, content, and interviews with men and women who are making a mark in the hospitality industry. So today I am super, super excited to welcome Sarah Malik, who is also a professor at Johnson & Wales University Charlotte campus. She was actually one of my professors. Professor Malik, welcome. Hi, this is so nice to see you after so many years. I know, it's, it's been many, many years. Yeah. And I so glad that we get to have a conversation today. Um, so I want to start by kind of beginning your journey, you know, your, your beginning. I always think about before you were Professor Sarah Malik, you were <laughs> Sarah. And so <laughs> let's travel back in time. Tell us about the then phase of your life. You know, where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. What was life like for you? Well, um, thank you, first of all, for asking me to join you. Um, it's a real pleasure. Um, well, um, I grew up in England, um, and I have lived in America for 25 years, but I don't appear to have lost my accent um, just Beautiful. yet. <laughs> um, but I grew up in the north of England um, in a county um, called Cheshire, and um, it's a very kind of rural area. We're famous for making cheese and it's kind of lots of dairy. Um, and the nearest city, um, which I grew up in, in sort of when I was at high school, was a city called Chester, which is a Roman city. Um, but the nearest big city, if you like, is Liverpool, which of course is very famous for the Beatles. Um, but that's, that's pretty much where I grew up. Quite a rural, I grew up in a very sort of small um, village, you know, when I was young. I certainly was not living in a, a bigger town until I was perhaps in high school. So very small village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you think about your life growing up in this small village where they were making cheese and <laughs> wonderful, uh, delicious things, um, can you recall maybe one life lesson or value that you learned during your childhood years that you're still applying to your life today? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a very, I do have a very close knit family. You know, I, I certainly spent most weekends with my grandparents, you know, one weekend with one set, one weekend with the other. I had wonderful aunts. I had lots and lots of cousins. Um, you know, so for me, you know, growing up, um, I suppose it was a very innocent childhood, like a lot of us, um, you know, had. Um, but I think that, you know, my life lessons were all about family, um, you know, making sure that when I was married and had children that I would, you know, raise my children um, the way that I was raised. Um, mm. You know, I just remember very happy memories growing up, um, you know, with brother, my brother and with my friends. You know, when, we live in, when you live in a small village, I'm sure a lot of people can attest to it. You know, you go to the same kindergarten, the same, you know, primary school, um, you know, you play after school. So everything, you know, you grow up with the same people. And so I do value um, what I've learned today is that sense of family and, yes. and very close friends. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So... I wonder, I want to know like what your aha moment was when you knew that you wanted to move into the hospitality industry. Would you say that there was something that happened in your childhood growing up um, mm. that made you say, hmm, hospitality and hmm, beverages? Like what was, <laughs> what was that moment for you? Well, I think that growing up, you know, my parents, my dad worked away a lot and my mom, you know, she had few jobs so I was always as the oldest you know sibling I was always very involved in the cooking um, I love to cook um, you know from a very young age I mean I was very small I could had to stand on a chair um, you know to cook um, my family did enjoy wine um, they enjoyed beer you know I grew up surrounded by you know just food and drink um, and I just really enjoyed um, keeping a tidy home. I eventually went into hotels. I'm sure that was probably why. But, you know, I used to love cleaning the kitchen. I still do. I like vacuuming and ironing. So I was kind of a little domestic goddess when I was little. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, and I, I just want to pause for a second and say uh -huh. I love that you actually said like domestic goddess because I think 
you know, females, like we reject that idea many times of being domestic and, oh, yeah. you know, but not really seeing that there's so much value in it. And then when you think about the hospitality industry, I mm -hmm. mean, that's, it is, it is service. It's creating experiences, mm -hmm. it's food. It's, it is. Yeah, I love that domestic goddess. Mm -hmm. You got to do something with that. <laughs> yeah I just like cooking for my grandparents they weren't very great cook they weren't great cooks you know my mom wasn't really a she, I mean she made me watch this but she wasn't a great cook um and so for me they were quite happy for me to go in the kitchen um and I was quite happy to cook and wash the dishes and I didn't moan and you know I've, I've always enjoyed that part of it you know and I think that eventually later in my life um I you know when you're at school in the UK, it's like the US, you know, we're encouraged to get jobs. So um, from a very early age, I, I had a job working in, in a market in a vegetable stall, um, mm -hmm. you know, serving vegetables. But um, I eventually worked in a kind of like a cafeteria when I was at high school. I was very young. Um, and I just remember I go in very early on a Saturday morning, um, you know, put all the stuff in the ovens. And it, yeah. it, was, it was just like a kind of a, a department store that had a cafeteria. And I just remember that aha moment was like, oh my God, I really love this. But people would be like, oh, how do you love like putting yes. sausages and bacon in, in you know, sheet pans? And I, I said, well, I do. I used to have the same people coming in every week. And I think my aha moment was really, you know, I was still at high school and I got promoted to a supervisor, a Saturday weekend supervisor. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was but 17 and, and most of the people that worked under me were, you know, a lot, lot older. And I remember thinking they gave me the uniform and they were, okay, you're the supervisor. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I had no idea that I had, maybe they saw a little bit of leadership in me that I perhaps didn't see myself. Yeah. I, I love that. So after that point or phase in life, what, was your education background like like what when you finished high school how did you transition into i guess the hospitality education yes yeah well while i was i, I did have more than one job just like johnson will students you know usually carry two or three jobs um after i finished working in the cafeteria in the department store i would go home shower and change and i'd go and work in a hotel um uh, behind the bar and um, it's a little bit different in the UK because we can work behind the bar when we're sort of 17, 18, you know, mm -hmm. the laws are a little bit more liberal. Um, and I just remember loving the hotel. It was a really nice hotel. It wasn't luxurious, but it was just, you know, weddings would come in on a Saturday. And, you know, mm -hmm. I love the whole aspect of bedrooms and restaurants. And it was always busy because I can't stand not to be busy. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember think, thinking to myself, well, this would be a kind of interesting career, you know, so I just researched it and I wanted to stay close to home because of family. And I ended up applying to a few universities that, that had a degree in hotel management um, and institutional catering, because believe it or not, I really enjoyed that whole aspect of the cafeteria, I, mm -hmm. I, school meals, factory meals, that type of thing really kind of... Um, kind of pulled me in a little bit mm -hmm. so I applied um, and I did get into m most of the universities I applied to but I was a little bit timid to go to London um, which is a whole other story I ended up saying you know that is, is that because I felt like oh that's the big city oh and yes <laughs> yeah like, I'd only been to I London I think once on a school trip and it terrified mm -hmm. me um, you know so I went locally I went to a big city Manchester which is like third biggest city in England, but it was it was only forty minutes from home. So if I did feel a little homesick, you know, I could could go home. Up home, wimpy. And I just, you know, and I went there for um, really a very vocational degree. Um, it was at the time we still have them in place, but it's very much a we call it an HND B Tech and. Basically, what you do is you study for six months and then you work for six months. You study for six months, you work for six months. I so, love it. Oh, it was great because straight away you would know, hey, is this for me? Um, and then you, they would, you really didn't have a choice. You know, first year um, placement, I had to work for Bass Charrington Breweries, you know, just pulling beer, you know, working in a bar. Um, and the second year they sent me to Scotland to work in a castle. So you were just like, that's where uh, you're going, you know? And so uh, I, that's sort of where I did. So I studied hotel management and, um, and you know, institutional catering where I learned how to cook. Wow. So mm. before we talk about your, because your transition from the UK to the United States, mm -hmm. I want to ask you at any point during those years of, training you know being in school learning and then going 
to work? Was there any parts of that the, that you were like, that you didn't like, or um, I'm trying to get a feel for like, was there any sector that you saw that you were like, okay, I like this, this, and this, but I don't like this mm -hmm. so much? Yeah, I think I, I, I didn't like the kind of, in the hotel industry, I was very resistant to the rooms division side, to the, okay. to the bedroom, the housekeeping, the front desk. And I think it's probably because I didn't really understand it as well as I understood the food and beverage aspect. Okay. So I knew that ultimately, you know, when I started working in the hotel business, I would eventually have to embrace that side of it if I wanted to be a general mm -hmm. manager. So I duly did down the road, but really my early years were more focused on food and beverage. Food and beverage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I always think that that's a good thing to ask because sometimes when we hear people's stories, mm. um, we hear like the highlight reel and you know, I just thought it would be good to have like that brief moment of transparency where you're like, I love the industry, but I did not, this was not my thing. Oh know? no, no. <laughs> Every time yeah. I had to go and make beds and clean the bathrooms, you know, I don't mind doing my own or my family's, right. but somebody else's, it was like grossing me out. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine, uh, the, <laughs> can only imagine the things that the room division oh. Yeah, horrendous. <laughs> so uh, your transition from the UK to the United States. So you took that that leap from your small mm. town to Manchester. And then mm. at some point you took an even bigger leap to a whole nother continent. So can you tell us about what that process was like? Why did you leave the UK to come here? And um, sure. how, well, how you felt? Yeah, I mean, before I actually came to the United States, I was actually in Switzerland for five years. So okay. I kind of left the UK and um, I ended up, when I was working for Hilton International, they sent me to Switzerland to do some training with an American gentleman called Don Smith. Um, very, very famous. He, he created menu engineering. And I remember being in Switzerland training and, th and then I was training in actually a hotel school. So mm -hmm. it was a school where, you know, international students could come and study. Um, and they asked me if I ever wanted to job, you know, to apply, you know, if you ever get sick of working in the hotels, you know, give us a call. Um, and about a couple of years later, I got into opening new hotels um, ground up and I was just exhausted. So I thought, you know, maybe I will go into this. And I contacted the Dean and they offered me a job, which ended up being, you know, a five year, stay. Um, what happened just by a kind of coincidence is that Johnson Wales hotel, International Hotel students would come um, as part of their semester um, over to the school that I work for. And so they thought it was a good idea if somebody from the United States would go to Switzerland and somebody, me, from Switzerland would come to the United States. Okay. Job switch. Gotcha. So question, well, yeah, question slash fun fact. I don't know if you remember, but I did, when I did my semester abroad, I went to Switzerland and we were in Oh, Bits I did not know that, that. Is that the city you were in? Mm hmm Wow. Absolutely. Wow. I, yeah. I, I look back on, you know, those 11 weeks that I spent there and it was just amazing. Like, it's I a mean, beautiful cool. country. Yes beautiful i mean yes we still had school work and i just you know still had homework to do but besides the homework you know <laughs> the experience of just being there i mean the air felt better i mean oh it's, it's just, beautiful it's just, yes it's beautiful it is a beautiful beautiful place but yes when you mentioned that i was like wait a minute i wonder if that was the same yes the same exactly city. the same place wow okay Yes. Yeah, we could talk about that, but I'll... I'll <laughs> yes. Well, the strange thing is, um, well, how I ended up in the United States was because the person that did the job switch with me ended up being my husband. <laughs> That's a fun yeah. fact. <laughs> that is a fun fact. So I'm glad you brought that up because I kind of wanted to ask, but I wasn't sure. I was like, you know, I was very curious to know about your, you all story about how you met and, but so it was through this experience that you all met each other. Correct. So um, my, basically we just, um, just got to know each other as friends. And, um, you know, when we eventually started going out and decided to get together, we tossed a coin and we basically, you know, decided, <laughs> you know, should we settle in Switzerland or should we settle in the United States? And um, so, 
I was very, very happy. We made a decision to move over. I move over here to the United States and I've been here. In fact, this month, um, I've been here 25 years Yay! And, and, and loved every minute of it. It's an amazing, amazing country. Indeed. Indeed it is. And I'm so, so glad that you took, you know, the, the steps and the courage you know, to move forward. Because when I think about just the impact you made on my life, you've done that for so many other students. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I think the lesson also that I want to pull from what you shared is how um, the, the choices that we make do impact other people. And mm. so um, had you s stay close to home, I may not have had the chance to meet you and so many students may not have come to love food and beverages as much as they have if you didn't make that small choice to move forward. So we oh my goodness. That's, that's <laughs> lovely. Thank you. Now, Thank I feel, you. now I'm glad I made that decision. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So you have arrived in the United States. Mm -hmm. You are happy. You're in love. And mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to talk about the different organizations and capacities that you've worked in. So, yes. well, I'm sure things happened when you got here. I don't, I know we just talked about you came to the U.S., but do you want to go back at all and flash back to um, any other positions that you had before you came over to the U.S.? Or would you like to just go ahead and start and talk about the U.S. experience? Yeah, I mean, I spent most of my formative years in, um, in the U.K. in hotel management. Mm -hmm. I spent five years, you know, in Switzerland where I've taught hotel management. I certainly did some work there, but it was more sort of private events. And so when I came to the United States, I really had to kind of find a job. So I went back into hotel management. So I actually went from operations to teaching back into operations. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you forget, the older you get, the more difficult it is to do those long hours. You're on your feet, you know, been here, done it. My gosh, this is quite hard work. I've forgotten how hard it was. Um, and I, I mean, I really enjoyed it, but it is different when you have a husband and mm -hmm. we wanted, you know, I, I know this sounds silly, but we, because I'd spent so many years working, mm -hmm. I was in my thirties. Um, and you know, I was in my, you know, late, 30s and I had to then think well are we going to have a family so right. I had two little girls you know very quickly who are gorgeous by the oh, way oh thank you they are gorgeous <laughs> thank you and I had these two little girls and it just was not um unfortunately conducive to working in the hotel business there was just mm -hmm. no way I could do it it was a juggling act um, so I actually had been a, a visiting professor at Johnson & Wales and I um, approached them and they were absolutely wonderful and um, hired me and I was able to be a mom and I was able to teach and I couldn't have wished for a better opportunity and I have worked for them ever since yeah. and, and been very, very happy, you know, and um, it, 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 was a, it was a great decision because, you know, when you, I know a lot of people out there have children and even teaching with a very, a much easier schedule per se. There were times I would be teaching and, you know, the either school nursery were called or the, you know, the, um, mm -hmm. the sense of how, one of them has a toothache, one of them has an earache, one of, you know, so it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just, I think I have more energy and I could pick them up from school and, from you know, school. spend time with them. Um, and it is funny because, you know, you go back to London and, and my fear of London. Well, my daughter, who is, um, she decided to, she, she actually was going to go to school in North Carolina. And then behind my back, she applied to go to fashion school in London and she interviewed without me knowing and she got in. And wow. then, so how funny, you know, we took her to the airport um, three years ago, two suitcases, little American yeah, yeah. she flew to London and she's been there ever since no fear at, no all. Fear at all wow and done really well you know so I think that you know it shows you when your little child who didn't even get raised in the um, United Kingdom I mean she spent a lot of time there she was familiar with it she yeah. had no fear none and I think also maybe connected to that is I think even just seeing the example of you and your husband um you, without you all saying it, you all lived a life of taking risk and, and stepping out and being in new and different places. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is a big risk. They watched you do it. So yeah. for them, um, I'm, you know, for them, it just, you know, they were like, oh, 
It yeah, wasn't why not? <laughs> why, why not? It still scares me, London, that's for sure, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Something else I was going to ask you, and I think it was, so once you came to the United States from the UK, mm -hmm. did, you, did you immediately come to Charlotte, North Carolina, or did you no. start? Providence campus? Yes, I did. I started in Providence um, and I really loved um, New England. You know, the weather um, yeah. was similar to where I'd grown up and um, the people were very similar. It was lovely, you know. And so I was in Providence and then um, eventually we went down to Charleston um, okay. for five years and then I've been in Charlotte 15 years. Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great, um, it's been a great opportunity, a great journey to sort of move around. Um, yeah. You know, it's not, it, it is, it's not a great upheaval. Um, you know, you do kind of meet people and say, hey, don't be friends with me because I won't be here much longer. You know? Yes. <laughs> but you yeah. know, luckily now I've sort of settled in, you know, and Charlotte's been a great place to raise children. Yeah. And both of them have gone to college now. So, you know, it's nice. It's amazing because I feel that I remember being a student and I don't know, I think maybe on rare occasions I may have seen them with you or just you know and then so then now like seeing them they are full-grown young women and it's like wow like when did you grow up and it's like oh yeah they grew up while you were in school and then the 10 years that you've been out of school that's when they grew up <laughs> exactly and you know it's like i was when you i just asked you okay when did you graduate it seemed like Wait. two years ago and you go oh. no it was actually it's not been. two years ago yeah it, it's crazy how time flies. It is. It, it really, really is. So mm -hmm. I now want to kind of ask you about being a professor in, in more detail. So you're currently in your one of your classrooms. So tell me about the space that you're in and why it's significant. And then I want to talk about some of the courses that you teach. Sure. Um, so this particular classroom is the wine room. Um, we also, my colleague, um, Dr. Sophie, she actually teaches coffee and tea in here as well. Um, but this is predominantly where we built a classroom that was designed to for wine education. So the tables are white, so the students can see the, um, you know, the color of the wine, and it's all mm -hmm. glass, so you can see natural daylight. Mm. Um, and, you know, so this is one of two beverage, actually, it's one of three, really, beverage areas that we have um, here in Charlotte. But this how is the one where we focus on wine. How fascinating. Uh, I remember being a student and, you know, us getting our, I guess, our, our, there was a sheet that had all the courses that we needed, classes that we needed to take, you know, for our degree. And uh -huh. I... I knew that I was studying hospitality, but there was just still so much I did not know. And I do remember just being so intrigued by the fact that we would have classes that were called like Foods One and I know. beverages and, and, you know, the fact that there is specific areas that are dedicated to like, this is just wine. And then you're saying that now there's a course that's on coffee and tea. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating and it's, oh, it definitely yes. gives credibility to what many people would um you know not celebrate I mean my, my family they used to tease me and they were like oh Sharice went to school to learn how to fold napkins like <laughs> oh my you know, parents used to say that as well right? <laughs> Still, people like this is a big deal and I think that that's so so incredible so with the courses that you are teach is is beverages the only course that you're teaching or are there yeah. other well, we started off with some, when, you, when we first opened Charlotte, we really only had a couple of beverage courses. I think when you were here, it was sort of beverage appreciation, and mm -hmm. I think it was um, beverage service management. So yes. beverage appreciation yes. was just yes. like a snapshot of, oh, this is beer, this is coffee, this is tea, you know. Yes. Um, and then a few years later, we sort of started to bring more um, courses in. So for the wine ones, we actually have a sommelier minor now. We actually have five different wine classes. Um, we have like foundations of wine. We have new world mm -hmm. wines, old world wines, sommelier, capstone. Um, we also brought in spirits and mixology. So um, we have... Um, an opportunity for students to learn about distillation and crafting cocktails, not really to be bartenders, but to understand the whole kind of philosophy behind that um, history, culture, legislation. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also built a kind of little 
brewery area upstairs. So we actually brought in beer oh. classes. So, you know, the students learn about beer. Um, they just, they can actually brew their own beer. Um, and we also Amazing. have coffee. I know it's horrible when students say, it wasn't like that when I was there. Oh, wow. And we have coffee and tea. So we really do have a lot of different beverage classes. And so the students, any major can sign up for them because they're electives. Um, So when I teach, I have students that, you know, fashion students, you know, culinary, baking and pastry, hotels, sports, event, entertainment. You know, I have every single major in the classroom. And sometimes, you know, what we, what they really forget is every industry that they work in somewhere along the line food and beverage is part yes. of it you know yeah. whether you're in a sports stadium having a beer and a hot dog it's still a it's big part a, yeah. Yeah. or whether you're a business person like you 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 work for a financial institution and mm-hmm. then you have to wine and dine a client oh exactly you, know, and you, you want exactly. to you know be prepared you know for that so yeah so I, that's right i mean i say to them this isn't just professionally this is something yeah. that is knowledge that will give you power and it, it's also just having those that etiquette that sort of angle yeah. you know a lot of students who've taken the wine classes have gone to work in like let's say hr you know and then their bosses find out oh you did wine oh right can you help me you know do this event yes. at the at the bank so sometimes they don't realize how this skill can be translated or transferred you know into their own job I definitely agree with you in that and I think that's you know again just to toot the horn for Johnson Wells just you know that that mix of experiences that we had whether you know even if you maybe were not a culinary student because you had friends that were you got exposed Mm -hmm. exactly from when they had to do labs or something you needed to, you know, participate or go to their mock dinner or. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's um, right. Just having, you know, being able to take a peek at different industries mm-hmm. um, in one space. And I think the other great thing is later on being able to collaborate with those people. And so even when I think about the guests that I have interviewed so far, um, many of them are Johnson and Wells alumni, you know, amazing. they have different, you know, different, areas that mm-hmm. they work in but you know they we all share that that same experience of yes. being yes yeah so. yeah you're yes. absolutely right to- you're so it's that's so true yeah yeah definitely so and so with the passion and the expertise that you have in beverages so i kind of want to dive into that just a little bit more mm-hmm. um how did well maybe not how when when how what um what was maybe your beverage aha moment for you well i think what happened was um it was one of my colleagues um was really um i'd spent years you know as a food and beverage manager i'd written wine lists i'd written bar programs you know i'd mm-hmm. operationally done weddings seven weddings a day you know I was totally competent operationally and yes. I understood beverage but I don't think I was ever I ever dug deep and okay. one of my colleagues um chef um you know uh, Catherine Rab, you know she was down in culinary um and I was you know up here in hospitality mm-hmm. and she said to me one day you know that she was teaching um a it was called the international sommelier guild and it was over in a community college and she said look it's kind of tough it's all day on a sunday nine to six you know Mm -hmm. for about six months but you know it's a sort of deep dive into wine and i said yeah that might be fun you know sunday i don't have to do the house you know i'll go out and study so she really was she was my instructor and um it, my goodness, it was just an epiphany. You know, I just realized that I kind of knew probably 20% of something that was way beyond, you know, what I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, so she really was my, um, it was my, aha, she was my aha moment. I was like, oh my gosh, I really have to dig deep and really learn more about this subject. Um, and over the years, we have studied together and we improved um, to the point where we, you know, we, we recently, not recently, but we took a, a diploma, which is a really, really high and hard certification, but we did it together with another colleague. Um, so actually, Charlotte, we're really proud of the fact that we, you know, there's three of us here that have the WSET diploma. Um, yeah. But boy, but it was hard. WSET stand for? 
the Wine Spirit Education Trust. Um, and the diploma is really, really brutal. It, you could take three years to do it. We were mindless and we did it in a year and a half. <laughs> but we actually did another we were actually doing a diploma, um, a similar one in another, um, the International Sommelier Guild, which is a Canadian one. So we were doing them simultaneously. And, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lying here. I, I'm telling you, I was studying 30, <laughs> if not... Alcohol. Sure you had a lot of alcohol during... 30 to 40 hours a week. Wow. 